Chill your motors! It's time to get righteous. As if you had anything better to do, I'm so sure. Like, gag me with a spoon. It's totally time for the Mythwits. The show that's like totally all things 80s, drenched in Aquanet, and coated with pop rocks, with your most excellent hosts, who are both bitchin' funny and totally radical. I'm Peter What's Your Damage Bryant, and joining me on this episode is my most excellent co-host, Bag Your Face Mike Kathis. Excellent! You know what we really need? We need Rufus, some guy to give us a magical phone booth that'll let us not have any glitches on this on this show. <laughs> no, right? This is round two. Uh, on this episode, <laughs> two. Wait, wait a minute, it's like we're going back and doing something again. On this episode, right? we're talking so about retro. a bodacious retro time uh, before the internet, cell phones, or flat screen TVs. We're like totally going back to the '80s, bro. All right, everybody. Uh, we we just did this a second ago, but for some reason it didn't go live. That's why we're a few minutes late. I don't know. It's yeah. Just with the the thing said it was doing the thing, and then it wasn't thing in the thing. So nah. here we are. So uh, this is the part where we'll start jumping into new material at, right after this uh, this statement, which is that we realized that there was no internet back then, and yet we, we all lived, we all had lives, and. I'm serious. I am hard pressed. I, I cannot think of what my life was like. You know what I mean? <laughs> some things were better. Some things were worse. <laughs> like, yeah. like just real quick, because we're going to talk about specific things, but but just just the, just the in generals. Right. Like, right. You went to the mall to meet with your friends. Right. I'm not going to get into the mall. I'm just going to talk about the, the meeting people. So you go to the mall to right. meet your friends. Right. You you say we're gonna be at this store at this time. Your ass was at that store at that time, or you ran around the mall trying to find him. <laughs> yes, you missed it. You or if you weren't there, you were missing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like it, and there was the, um, you know, the old days of like the guy won't stop and ask for directions. Right, that's not today because today you know you just pull up your right. GPS and 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 here's the thing. Here's the funny thing about guys, right? So guys previously would not stop to get directions but now every guy in the fucking car is given directions here i got it on my gps i got i got yeah. this i got it right i got it i got it <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's just there's so many weird things about the '80s. Uh, just just a different time. We were talking a little bit about movies. We're gonna dive into some movies, but there were just just things there. I want you to just think about some movies that you can't even get today because of the way they were back then. You know what I mean? Just, just there's a couple of movies. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to get into it. No, nope. you're you right. It. You're right. You're right. We'll get, we'll get into it later. We'll get into it uh, some other time. But just so everybody knows, like whatever your favorite 80s thing is, if we don't cover it, don't sweat it because there are too many things. We're not going to cover a lot of stuff that I would love to cover. We're not going to cover a lot of stuff that Mike would love to cover. Like we started making lists of things and the fuck it would be all day. It would be all day. Yeah, we could right. spend we could spend the whole day. So we had to pair But definitely on. There were some painful cuts, let me tell you. Yes, definitely. Throw Just throw everything out when we hit there. And yes, Paul, we're going to talk about the food court. We're going to talk about the mall. There's all, I mean, fashion. There's a whole, we got a whole agenda here, guys. So, um, but but uh, stay with us. And if we if there's anything we missed, please throw it into the chat room later. Or if you're listening to this later, please email us at mythwits at gmail.com. And just say, hey, I listened to the show and I was thinking about this for the 80s. You never know. We may give you a shout out on a later show. Spitz, Spitz says she remembers being born. <laughs> like, probably yeah. Probably the tail end of that, right? <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, right. Spence. And so uh, start, mom, Mike? can Eric come over and spend the night? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike. You're supposed to tell your mom that you're going over Eric's, right? And then I'll tell uh, my mom I'm going over your house. And then Eric will tell his mom that he's coming over mine. Because no one can check on anything because no one has any fucking cell phones. <laughs> there's no GPS tracking. There's right. no, we have fucking <laughs> completely just disappeared. What are Eric's parents like? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, check their Facebook page. What's the Facebook yeah. page? <laughs> right. Okay. All right. So the the how I want to start this is um, we just basically did give our our very general impressions. But um, I asked you, Pete, to make uh, a list of ten things, uh, and I said you I would allow you to have if you wanted. I would allow you to have a couple of um, honorable mentions, but ten things for you that uh, mean the '80s to you. So. Uh, you know, this is a completely uh, objective thing. 
you know? Okay, yep, yep. I mean, so subjective. My, everybody's, you know, because everybody's life is different. My 80s, like I said, my 80s is different than yeah. Mike's 80s, right? Oh, so, definitely. <laughs> especially since what? you came along a couple years later, right? So yeah. I was going through the 80s a couple years ahead of you, which creates a different feel for things, you know? Like, yeah, that's right. What, what was it? Uh, there was episode of, um, somebody was telling me about the episode. I, I like the show, but I haven't seen them all. But it was How I Met Your Mother and how uh, Barney would determine whether he, was, he could sleep with a girl or not. If she thought Ewoks were dumb, he could sleep with her because she was old enough. And if she thought they were cute, he couldn't sleep with her because she was too young. So, right? So, like, I hated Ewoks, but you probably didn't hate them, right? Oh, I, I did. Are you I actually oh, you did. Were young. You were like, yeah, but I, they, they were just bizarre to me. They didn't make sense. The Ewoks to me were my generation's, um, what's his name? Yar Yar Bink. Um, yeah, yeah, Jar Jar Binks. To me, they they right, were so, unnecessary. A lot and a lot of people. Do. So I guess let's, let's or go. I get to sleep with Barney. Yeah, sure. Let's do our top okay. ten or my top whatever. Okay. So I'm gonna start with the number one thing that defined my '80s, uh, and that was Dungeons and Dragons in 1980. Mm -hmm. I started playing. I discovered this game and started playing it. It has probably had role playing games have probably had the biggest impact. I mean, I don't play role playing games anymore. I mean, wait, let me take that back. Rewind. I don't play Dungeons and Dragons anymore, but I do still play role playing games. Mm -hmm. uh, just keep going down my list. Um, you know what? I I'll tell you what. I will let you keep going down the list, but let, I'm going to stop because I want to. If it, if it's pertinent to what you say, that's on my list. I'd like to. I'd like to jump in. Is that is that cool? Can sure. we can we have Why those not? kind of rules? Yeah, All right. Yeah, yeah. On my list, it was D and D kills kids. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, the whole <laughs> so, thing. So, right. yeah, that that was that whole, that whole thing. It. Yeah, you know, right. now D and D is healthy. It's all over the internet. Before, it was gonna kill your children. Yeah, that's right. Thanks hey, for buying me my first set, mom. You didn't know. Right. So, uh, number two, uh, and these are kind of, kind of in order, kind of not. I mean, a little bit. All right. So Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like to when I think okay. of 1980s, he mm -hmm. just comes out. He was like, I am the persona of 1980. You right, know, right. Everything's bigger and better, and just and and weightlifting was so huge at the time. And and I got into it. I bought into the whole thing and started like lifting weights, trying to get all big and pumped. Um, but I was like 90 pounds, soaking wet. You know. So hmm. hey, my okay. picture's up. You can see my picture right now. That's what I look like in 1987. So. <laughs> Pretty. Well, it may not be up right now because you're looking. Are you looking at the feed no, no, and maybe a little it. bit? No, oh, okay. Oh, good for you. Good for you. Yeah, yeah you're a handsome mother yes, sketcher. I'll tell you. Uh, yeah. flock, of flock of seagulls. seagulls. Yep, yep. All right. So number three, Jolt Cola. I loved me some fucking nice. Jolt Cola. I I miss it, and and I know you can get it. So it came. They mm -hmm. re-released it, uh, but you can only get it in Dollar General. And I have stopped. I think at eight Dollar Generals and haven't gotten it yet. And I, I, I'm, I'm going to trust you that you did your research. I don't why I feel like Jolt was like, like '90s, but I'm, I'm going to defer. I'll, 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 I'll oh, say no, you it were. Lasted. No, it lasted. It lasted. 90s. Okay. It came out in the '80s. It came out really in the '80s. In okay. The 80s. Okay. All right. I remember. Good stuff. Twice, I remember all the sugar, <laughs> twice the caffeine. Oh, I remember, bro. I but remember. I it was the first energy drink, uh, and I don't like energy drink now. I just, I just, and I like the taste of Jolt. I actually prefer the taste of it. If I could get it over Coke, I always would. Uh, parachute pants had a pair of those. <laughs> oh, pair of those. Paul is Paul is in rare form in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm David sorry. <laughs> <laughs> nice Spanish porn mustache. Oh, nice. See, He's this is why about this you. is why you need to watch this show live. If you're watching it live, you can see the chat room and you get to participate. Oh my god! All right, yeah. so uh, parachute pants had a pair in 1985. I only oh, had one yes. pair my whole life. Same uh, here. One pair. That's all it took. All it took. <laughs> yeah, it's like did it, bought the t-shirt, done. Yeah. They were not comfortable. They were hot. Uh, MTV, dude. Mm -hmm. Back when it was like when it really was music television. Um, uh, I'm gonna have to cross that off my list. I too have MTV as as on my list. Yeah, and, and I remember my aunt. She she was one of the first people to have. Oh, there's Mike. Oh, there's a picture. If you're looking, look at the images there. There's young Mikey. Uh, it's it's one with you got your arm around each other. What are you about? Probably about 16, 17 there, or something like that. Uh, yeah, that was okay. junior. I say junior yeah. year. I was okay. going to a prom. Okay. So or a dance. Um, no, that one was a dance, but yeah. Okay. So uh yeah, so so MTV uh, cable had just come out. Uh, my aunt had it and I remember watching MTV like the first like I don't maybe the first month the thing was on. 
And uh, uh-huh. it was, it was, I was like, what is this so crazy? It's like, this is like Friday night videos, but all the time. Right? <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then uh, here's something you don't see very often anymore. Video game arcades. Lots of quarters been uh, sunk in that. Yes. Oh, if, that's a good one. I got to definitely give you that. That was a good me, one. For me, lots of quarters was a big deal. Uh, like my lots of quarters was different than a lot of other people's lots of quarters because I was poor. So when I went to the arcade, there was games. The games I generally gravitated to were the ones that I could last more than a few minutes at. So I didn't play like the hard Like Dragon's Lair was out of the fucking question. Could not play it. I loved watching other people play it. I could not afford to put a dollar in that thing and be done and- with it in two minutes. As an aside, because people are all over these picks, and yes, Jenny is correct. She is in that class pick of us that we were oh, in. Oh, sweet. Okay. Uh, she's in, I made sure that she made it into the before I cut it off. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so. Yeah, uh, all right. So Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan. He was one other face of the 80s, man. He he really elected in 1980, went eight years. Hey, hey, hey Mikey. Tear down that wall, go Mr. Gorbachev. (laughs) (laughs) I did not know what was going on. Yeah, Ronnie, we found out later on that you really did not know. But he was uh, he seemed like a good guy. All right, Atari. Atari, like the home ones, like the home like twenty six hundred, the original. Twenty six hundred, yeah. Yeah. Now, interestingly, and I have that on a list for the toys or for computer games stuff, is that Atari twenty six hundred came out in seventy seven. Just want to point that out. Oh, it I came know. out in seventy seven, but it its life, it and its longest tail was it in the eighties. Dominated sure. the eighties, man. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh I know. Yes, I got you. Sure. Yep, yep. Some yep, of these yep. things are gonna look. Some of these things are gonna span. You know, some of them are gonna go from the '80s into the '90s. Some of them are gonna be a little bit before. Um, sure, sure. Like, like well, my I number just, ten. I, I took the time to check. I took the time to do my check. And uh, yes, yeah, so did I. And Rat Tail, Rat Tails. Oh yes. I was gonna say mullet, right? But I gave up. I gave up on that one because there's still people up the road that have mullets, and I'm just like, no, yeah. it never. That never really went away, unfortunately. But no. Rat Tails, thank God, did. I'll touch on mullets later. I, I have a little uh, right. sentence I'd like to touch on mullets. And my last thing for me that was 80s, uh, and, and I know punk rock has a long history. It goes back into the sure. 70s. But 1980, right around 1980 is when hardcore punk happened. That's when you mm-hmm. get the Misfits and the Dead Kennedys coming out with their their harder stuff and Exploited. And, and all the bands that I loved, that, that I really loved, was uh, was the 80s. That was my That's my <laughs> punk era. Friendship bracelet, Scott Pond says. I did not, and I say that because that's not on my list, but hold on to that, Scott. Um, All right, let's see. So, and do you have any, even as you were saying these things, any honorable mentions before I move on to my list? No, go to your list. Okay. There are, there are just too many. I I could go on all All day. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so for me, um, and and this is in no particular order, uh, but the Sony Walkman. Yeah. Uh, I just can't remember a time from, you know, me being uh, maybe 11 or 12 years old, old enough to actually have one uh, uh, until after the ni- into the 90s when it, it turned into um, a disc man. But I, I always had one. Always. Oh, I'm sorry. You're so unprivileged. No, I, I, I was man. very lucky. I, I was no, very no, I had lucky. Walkmans. I had a bunch of them. Okay. Yeah. And, and that was the whole thing. I mean, and yeah, did you know you they know, sold those at people's drugs. Yeah, <laughs> you mean they stole those at people's drugs? <laughs> yes. What? Who did that? What? <laughs> so, so, and for me, for whatever reason, I always, I never got the one I really wanted, which was that that yellow sportsy one that was waterproof. Who the hell needs a waterproof, you know, tape player in the first place? Especially '80s waterproof, which is more of a. In the rain. A You're on a bus stop. You get caught I in the know. rain. Yeah, I know. But anyway, okay, so I already got to D&D Kills Kids. Uh, Kodak cameras. Now, two things about Kodak and Polaroid cameras. Polaroid, you know, with the shake and the flip and the thing. But yeah. also the flash bulbs. Remember? Like the little, the, 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 uh, and I, I couldn't get a picture of them. Yeah, the little cubes. And you put them on and then it just one shot. And that was it. They were gone. If, no, throw it no. away. Then they, then, they had the, then they had the ones that turned. They had like four shots. You could get yeah. four shots on four, one. Yeah. Huh? Four yeah. shots on. Yep. So uh, for whatever reason, that's been prominent in my head um, because me and a friend of mine went to the beach and we were taking pictures of girls' butts with our with our um, cameras. Not the flashes, mind you, but uh, yeah. uh, something you would do in the 80s. 
Something um, you can't do nowadays that you could do in the 80s. Right, you really see? couldn't do. You couldn't no. really do you it, but you did. You shouldn't have done it in the 80s. But you shouldn't but, have, uh, but you did. This was this was our uh, that that was the the, the closest thing to Snapchat. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> smoking on airplanes. Now, this is an interesting fact I'd like to throw out because I did some research on this. Okay, uh, smoking on airplanes on April the twenty third, nineteen eighty eight. Domestic flights less than two hours were banned. Mm -hmm. um, and after that, it just went well. I mean, some you would either say uphill or downhill depending upon which side you sit on. But uh, yeah, I mean, prior to that, thing. most of the eighties. People smoked on aeroplanes. Dude, they smoked everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. But, I mean, anyone who's been on an aeroplane in the last 30 years, 30 years, even even Spence, could not even fathom smoking on an aeroplane. But I've, I remember being on an aeroplane and, ha and, and the people smoking on them. Yeah, the whole thing was all <laughs> fucking smoked up. And, yeah. like, you, you, I mean, it was, like, I remember when I started working in 88. Uh, at an office and there was um they had just just before i got there they just had put a smoking section in the office um so if you wanted to be in that smoking section they would they could move you could have your desk moved over there so you could move to one of the desks over there because it had a big giant smoke eater above it and there was this guy who sat there and just smoked constantly like all day long <laughs> And I think I, I want to say maybe the rule where you couldn't smoke at work happened around ninety ish, ninety one maybe. Oh no! Well, in our building, I remember the place I worked. No one smoked on the first floor. We got away with. We weren't supposed to, but no one else came upstairs, so we would get away with smoking in this one room inside. And we thought we were hot shit for like a year until they were like, ah, "Nah, nah." Turns right, out these, right. these these fines are real. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and apparently okay. I don't know if I, I don't know what it was, but somewhere around there they couldn't smoke at work anymore, and so people would go outside and smoke, and productivity went, bam, took a big dive <laughs> at first because people were always outside smoking. Um, pay phones, pay phones. That's another What's thing that? that kids today wouldn't know what that was about. What? What's that? I pay my bill every every month. I pay my bill. Right, right. I want you to imagine this, right? <laughs> yeah. But it would. It had a cord and a very metal cord, and and it was stuck to a wall. And yeah. this is hung on the wall it, out in public, some different places. Somewhere. Now, and if you wanted to use it, you would just take a quarter and you would stick it inside the the phone, and then you could use it for a little while and make a make a telephone call. Yeah, yeah, I know, I got you, man. It, and and it had the, remember that. I don't know if I remember. Maybe I do remember um, rotary pay phones. What, what do you mean? Sure you don't I remember? Do. Well, you remember rotary phones, right? Oh, I definitely yeah. remember. I, I had my first phone that when when my dad made me pay for my tel own phone service because he was not dumb. He was like, "You want to talk to your friends and 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 hog up the line? You're paying for it," which did, I did. Did it come from? Did it come from AT? Did it come from the phone company? Like, did you lease it from the phone company? No, he. My dad was a tech guy. He had oh, phones on. Right. Oh, your dad, the phone dude. Yeah. Right? yeah. No, we had the ones we had. They you, you leased them from the phone company, right? They would just bring you another one and it would charge you like I don't know, ten cents a month or something. Yeah. But you could you could murder somebody with that phone, like that thing, and it would still work. You could talk to somebody as the <laughs> blood was pouring out of the receiver into your ear, and it would work just fine. The thing was a tank. <laughs> That is true. Uh, let's see. What's next for me? Uh, Max Hedrum, which interestingly, obviously, you you had. I did a deep dive on Max Hedrum. I suggest anyone, um, because I cannot find the actual television show from the Americanized television show from, I believe it was ABC, but I did find Max Hedrum 20 Seconds Into the Future, which was the British Oh yeah, uh, proof of concept show that they did, and you can find that on on uh, YouTube. And I mean, it was just so fascinating to see that. And you see some of the same characters they brought over to the to the U.S. show. Um, that was fun. And I mean, Max Hedrum was just such a phenomenon in the '80s. Yeah. It was just crazy. Um, so you know he nuts definitely about that? is. You know what's what? about that? They had him, and he looked like he looked like a crappy like graphic. Peter. Yeah, but it wasn't a computer animation at all. Nope. <laughs> like, and the they, animation it, wasn't even good enough to do it crappy like that. Right, it cost them almost as much money to do what they did in the end. Yeah, it's 
Uh, and now, now, yeah, now you and I could just get like a what do you call it? Like a uh, a app. Snapchat, like yeah. a yeah, Snapchat uh, filter or something. Okay. Um, exactly. And David, I think gets credit for saying this at first already, but um, uh, Swatch Watch definitely yeah. that was a big thing i had a swatch watch it's the one when you see a swatch watch coming up in the feed that that was mine i actually picked that one out as a picture okay. um I'm oh hey here. real quick if you're, if you're looking Roger the, Moore's james bond if you're looking in the pictures now there's me i'm right in the middle and yeah i'm wearing the, the, the gray shirt with the red stripe on it that was grade eight for me i was 13 go ahead mike okay oh, there's mike I, going to prom i think with your pink Cummerbund yeah. and bow tie, nice. Yeah. Going to a junior prom. Nice. Um, let's see. Swatch. Oh, uh, so Saturday morning cartoons. Right. Um, I know. So I and so just so everyone knows, it's it's already we're already I know like twenty over oh, twenty minutes, and we're gonna go a little bit longer because we were late to start. But just so you know, we're not doing a game per se, but I have chosen a few things here and there to either have a very micro game while we're still introducing information, and one of them is the death of Saturday morning cartoons. Now, okay. Peter, do yes, you sir. know why Saturday morning cartoons died? Ah. <sighs> God, I read this. I remember reading this. Um, and it was a weird, it was like educate some kind of law, some kind of educational law or something like that that came through, right? And it, and the networks, they had to do something and it kind of fucked up the whole program. Is that right? I'm, gonna, I'm giving you a point on that. I'm giving you uh, three-fourths credit. Uh, okay. The children, yeah, you know, almost no, you get a whole point. The Children's Television Act, okay? In 1990, uh, it was, it was uh, passed and... After that, um, it was requiring um, requiring them to have more aggressive. Uh, they were more aggressively enforcing um, the CTA, and networks had to quickly throw some learning material in, um, and then shorten the amount of commercials and all of that. Um, the networks were deciding you know what? It's not even worth it anymore. We're yeah. going to get paid programming and we're going to get the uh, sports deals because we don't have to worry about the, the, the um, amount of right. uh, commercial times we can get for sports deals. Um, it was actually, it was going to, it was starting to cost them more money. It was, I believe I'm reading in this article and I'll post this article somewhere. Um, I'll post this one on the, um, on the show notes, but basically it was something like it costs $300 million even back then to make uh a like you know 20 episode series of uh, like say cartoons right 300 wow. million dollars they were only getting um 350 million in in ad revenue which means they were getting 50 million so when they started making deals for sports and when they were saying they had to cut out commercials and they were going to lose even more money and they had to pay more money to have more more right, time yeah, 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 yeah. so they were like that's it we're done and done. it was along with that was the um the syndication um on cable so then you could have uh it was a perfect time for nick nickelodeon to start syndic syndicating keep going, keep stuff going. it's wrong oh keep going, okay keep going. okay and so that was the uh death of saturday morning cartoons everyone um you never would have thought about it but yes the government actually killed saturday morning yeah. cartoons see that paul see that paul paul's right <laughs> Paul's our anti-government guy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> absolutely right, Paul. They killed Saturday morning cartoons. Government. <laughs> so number nine for me is latchkey kids. I was a latchkey kid, and uh, no offense to my mom, I think I did. I turned out actually okay, but the there were a lot of kids, and I don't know about you, Pete, but well, actually, we do know about you, Pete. Yeah. Um, we have stories of you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, I was that was the thing that happened, I was kids. The latchkey kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was the thing, kids. We all stayed. We all got home from school, and we stayed home until our parents got home. And we tried to not burn the house down. We tried yes. really hard. I'd like to say, I'm um o for o for o, yeah, burning the house burning, down. No burning the house down. 
That's oh, right. Hey, Mike, by the um, way, I wore my, my, this is my 80s T. It's the only 80s T-shirt I have. This is Wax Tracks. They made all those really cool records back in yeah. the, getting closer to the, like mid to late 80s, but like, you know, Ministry and Revolting Cox and all those really cool, awesome bands, Front 242. Yeah. Those were all Wax Tracks line, line, cool. all lines. All right. I got uh, four honorable mentions. I'm going to run through them. We're not even, you, you can discuss, uh, pick out one of them to discuss if you wish, but cement floor jungle gyms. That was a thing in the eighties. Cigarette candy and gum. Yes. We smoked candy cigarettes because that was the thing. It looked cool. Um, and I also, I had mullets as a backup and, uh, just say no. That was the, like, just say no was an eighties thing. Um, that was Ms. Uh, Ms. Re Reagan, wasn't it? And you know what? And nobody, Nobody said no. Drugs in Nobody. the 80s were rampant. <laughs> yes. Everywhere. Rampant. It awesome. All right. I mean, so, what? I, I mean, what? 80s? <clears throat> what? <laughs> I said no. I always, oh, I said no. I said no more. I can't handle any more. Way no too more. fucking high. <laughs> All right. Um, why don't we just move on to fashion? And uh, I don't know how how much we need to discuss it, but uh, I mean, a lot of people have thrown out some stuff. And if you want to re re enter what you threw out, we can try and um, identify it in the chat room. Pete, why don't you watch the chat room as I read off my list of just fashion things from the um, that were quintessential '80s fashion? All right. Um, and then you can call out any if anyone um, yells out anything else in the room. All right. So. Ray-Ban Wayfarers and or Aviators, a la um, Top Gun, yep. which is a movie you never saw. So, so that's an issue. I mean, there I can't I'm not going to mention any names, but there is someone who I know very dearly. And they're like, how the fuck did he not see that movie? That said, uh, Jams, Jams, Board Shorts and Ocean Pacific, Benetton, Body Glove, uh, Members Only. The Coca-Cola Rugby Polo. And I would like to say that that red one in there, that was one that I owned. I actually was lucky enough. I thank mom. I want to say thank you because I may have had a lot of time when I thought I didn't get what the other kids got. But, you know, occasionally you did. You got me something I really wanted. And I appreciate that. Even though the one time when you bought me a coat and I didn't like it and I threw it away at school and you made me go and try and find it. But I lied and said it wasn't there. I am going to just say that I love you and thank you for that, mom. Um Parachute pants we mentioned, leg yeah. warmers. I never had a pair myself. Um, no. Jean jackets and or denim overalls. <laughs> that was hey, just. Was this when thing. boxers became a thing in the eighties? Uh, Could have been. Could have been. I'm not going to say they weren't. Uh, um, I honestly don't know the history of boxers. Uh, Reebok pumps. I was lucky enough to have a pair of Reebok pumps. Again, oh my god. I swear to God, it made me feel powerful. God, are you fucking kidding me? I thought those things were a joke. You know what I had? I had ruse. They were the shoes that had the pocket on the side. I thought it was cool. I had an extra pocket to put stuff. Well, that's <laughs> awesome. I'm, I'm kidding. I never had a pair of those, but they were. It's <laughs> good. No, but I did have. I did have the. I had the tennis shoes that you could zip off the bottom, and you could put a different top on them, so you could have like mm -hmm. multiple colors. They were. They were like Chucks, but they were. They weren't really Chucks, but you right. could. Zip new tops on them. <laughs> wow, that's see modularity has always been in our history as a as a race. <laughs> um, so and if you will look at the pictures that go by, and you'll see um the one of me and and the um the girl that I was taken to her um, ring dance. Uh, you see, her hair was quite high, and uh, that was thanks to Aquanet, because without Aquanet, girls bangs would not be. Um, the five and six and seven inches that they needed to be. <laughs> the, the craw. The craw. <laughs> Dude, I hated I hated that hair. I hated that hair back then. I I couldn't stand it. I hated that goddamn hair back then. And when I read somewhere that it might be coming back, I was like, please God no, please God no. Let it die. <laughs> oh, Paul's says butterfly knives. Yes! I yes. loved butterfly knives. Sassoon, yeah. Air Jordans. Uh, okay, Nunchucks. so... Um, and anything ninja. That's right. Hey, Pete, yeah. I'm not going to ask you if you did. I'm going to ask you how many pairs of nunchucks did you make? God, uh, probably about four or five. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Because there's uh, the PVC pair that I made, the pair right. that I made out of like a like a uh, um, uh, broom like handle a pole from a, from a broom handle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I made a metal pair. That was a bad 
bad idea. Real bad no. idea. Yeah, that's, uh, those that's went crazy. away quick. Okay. How about popped collars? Do you remember in the 80s, near the later hated 80s, it. it was like popped collars all the time? Hated the popped hated. collar. <laughs> hated it. Uh, how, how about um, Baja hoodies? Remember those? Yes, I do. I, do. Uh, I had one. Raise your hand, everyone in the chat room, if you had a Baja hoodie. Ninja stars, David. Yeah, I never made a ninja star. Uh, although I think when we were in Polly, everyone tried to make a little knife or something, but they always caught you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, and the Converse Chuck Taylor All-Stars. I think I did that. Now. Chuck. Yep. Um, girls, Jordash. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hugging jeans. Now, what I wanted to say about the what the mullet is that, you know, first of all, everyone knows that it was a uh, business in the front and all party in the back that we all know that party in the back. Yeah. But did you know that the mullet was actually born in the 70s? But its climax was definitely in the 80s. However, there is still a very micro tail that is still there's a few like you said, there's a, someone up the street hanging on to it. Why? I don't know. I don't know. You know who's the and, most epic, like the most epic friggin' mullet that's a star today is his when he's a, a picture of when he was a kid is the guy who plays Hawkeye in uh, Avengers. If you look him up, him as a kid, what's his name? Um, Jeremy yeah, Renner. If you look up Jeremy, Jeremy Renner yeah. as a kid, he has this like spike. I mean, it's like spiked, right? Yeah. And then like mullet. <laughs> I've seen that. I saw that picture. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Uh, so let's see what else. Uh, anything else everyone's talking about? Jonathan Walker, thanks for joining us. He says uh, he owned a pair of Chuck Taylors, All Stars, right. um, Zoo Pants. Oh, oh yeah, David oh. Bowie Zoo Pants. Yeah. And and I'm I almost got a picture of those, but I will say my mom. She called. So you know, we you know how that thing was. We all had our little hair that dangled in the front, right? We all grow yeah. our hair all along in the front, yeah. right? Hey, so, hey, look at the picture that's up on the side right now. That's what Mike's yeah. talking about. <laughs> so my mom called that my cookie. Because I had curly hair, so it was this curly mess that just dangled in front of my face, and she yeah. called it my cookie. So, Mom, yes, I'm giving you, I'm gonna give you a uh, shout outs for that. Mohawks, Pete, did you ever want a mohawk? I wanted one, well, but it was new. Dude, yeah. so yep. I did. I wanted a mohawk. I, you know, I wanted to go all like hardcore punk and shit. But man, I was pushing it with with my cousin. My cousin was very. I live with my cousin, and he was very, very conservative. And uh, he said that. So, so check this out. He says, he says, if you if you cut your hair into a mohawk, because I threatened to just do it myself, right? Because what are you gonna do? You can't undo it, bitch, right? Said, <laughs> oh, yeah, you but think you can? You can. You undo can it, undo it. it. Zip the center. Oh, it head. is. Yeah. It. Right, and it's funny because that would have been this, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I should have just said, "Fuck it, do it." No, I don't know. It just it wasn't worth the fight at home. I I, yeah. I had a pretty good. You know, he, he took me in and, and, and was, was kind enough to, like, you know, take over for where, you know, where, where others left off. Uh, so so I did. I tried to respect him as much as I could and still do my own thing. So I, I avoided the mohawk. But as soon as I moved out, um, I did shave my head and I left just the top one and tied it to a top knot because I was past wanting a, a, a mohawk, really, at that point. I wanted I wanted to do, like, my top knot thing, which you see a lot of today. And I'm going to tell you, Mike, you're my god, as Mike is my witness nobody was doing that for years one body was doing it me that's you that's right this guy and people yep. would be like We're wow doing... you look like a fucking samurai with that top knot and and now i see everybody everybody's doing it yeah. nowadays yep okay so uh clothing moving on uh we're gonna touch on movies but pete and i had a discussion about this um and good thing for you people, we have more content because movies of the 80s just kind of demands its own um, show. We're going to yeah. do a show about movies in the 80s. However, we would be remiss if we just didn't kind of cover some of our favorite movies from the 80s. Um, and I have also, this is another area where I've put a little game. But uh, I'm going to say that there were two things about the 80s that, that really helped to shape me. One was John, John Hughes. And I don't know if you were over the John Hughes uh no, I like John Hughes. I was, I was okay. John Hughes. All right. So John Hughes, as well as um, all all of the means, so many wonderful sci-fi movies that some some hold up and some don't. Uh, so that said, first I'm going to start off with uh, John Hughes movies, um, and these are in order of them coming out. Okay. So you got Sixteen Candles came out in '84, Breakfast Club came out in '85, in the beginning of '85, Weird Science came out in 
the end of 85. Pretty in Pink came out in 86. Ferris Bueller's Day Off came out in later in 86. Some Kind of Wonderful was in, later in 87. Now, some people will say, that's ah, not really Brad Pack, but that's still one of his, uh, his better movies. Now, after saying all of those, um, I want you to imagine now, uh, you and I know a little bit about production, and we can fathom that, you know, what movie productions are like. They were doing two movies a year for like four years. They were just doing movie after movie after movie after movie. It doesn't seem like that when we were younger, right? No, it wasn't. So I, I read a whole thing about this, it, it, how the movie industry changed and how uh, movies became more of a profit thing. Um, and more movies are coming out, and and as the technology becomes more accessible to people, um, there there are more there's more movies being made and are being made faster. Uh, back then, they would they movies would take two three years to come out. Like it would take them two or three years to make a movie, right? right. And, and we're not even talking about big giant sci fi mm -hmm. blockbuster crazy shit. We're talking about. Right. I mean, Lucas. It was three years between each Star Wars movie. This yeah. insanity of doing one every year, which so is what unheard of. I imagine you're this teen kid and you're in these movies. You still are trying to have a life like you were on th some of these were probably these kids were on like three movies at one time. Yeah, that's nuts. That's what I wanted to point out. All right. Um, and then, uh, you know, I kind of feel bad because, you know, love them or hate them. A lot of people don't like or, or or would say, oh, you're remiss if you, you know, you're not even mentioning John Cusack. So some people hate him. Sorry, honey. Um, but other people. Um, I love John Cusack are, back then. Oh, my God. I, he was all right. I mean, I, I could take him or leave him or whatever. But Dude, uh, better off dead. Stand by. Two oh, oh, dollars. Yeah. Two yeah. dollars. Come on. And if for whatever reason, Stand By Me just stands out as a really good movie in the 80s. Right, um, yeah. yeah. All right. Now, now we're going to get to uh, our sci-fi movies. Okay. Now, and in, in doing this, then let's just check our, uh, let's just check our, check the chat room for a minute. We got anything? Oh, people are saying Time yeah, like Bandits. Time Bandits, Ice, Ice Pirates, Highlander. Ice Pirates. Off the okay. Head. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and Pete, how I'm going to introduce these is I'm going to give you two movies. All right. Okay. I want you to tell me. Uh, is which movie came first? Okay, right. so which movie came out first? Gotcha. Uh, Back to the Future or Empire Strikes Back? Empire Strikes Back, nineteen eighty three. Back to the Future was nineteen eighty four. Your years are wrong, but I'm going to give you your answers. Empire Strikes Back was nineteen eighty. Back oh, to the Future, right. ni ni nineteen eighty two. Damn it! Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. right what am I thinking? No, Re yeah. Return of the Jedi was was eighty three, right? I don't know. Whatever. Go ahead. That might be another so. one. Uh, so the next two movies, The Terminator and yeah. RoboCop. Which one came out first? I'm gonna say Terminator. In my head, it's my head tells me to, uh, like as a gut feeling. I'm not sure they're close, but I think right. Terminator. Hey, that's fine. You know, we don't want to belabor. You are you are absolutely correct. Terminator came out in eighty two. Robocop came out in eighty seven. Oh, All right. Wow, they were far apart. Okay. Yeah. Um, here's another two. The fly or the Wrath of Khan. Oh, Wrath of Khan. Wrath of Khan came out first. Yep. You are absolutely correct. Uh the fly came out in nineteen eighty six. Wrath of Khan came out in nineteen eighty two. Yeah. All right. Here's your next one. Yeah, Here's a good one. You ready for these two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blade Runner or The Last Starfighter? Okay, Blade Runner. Last Starfighter was garbage. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, opinions are like assholes. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I was gonna get you. <laughs> you know we, you know how we, how we fare on that one. We know where the lines are. Right. Uh, so you're saying Blade Runner, Blade Runner eighty two, mm -hmm. uh, The Last Starfighter eighty four. Yep. Uh, okay, and then we have two more. All right. Stop with and, Howard and the reason Duck. I... Howard the Duck never happened. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Some people actually liked Howard the Duck. Right. Oh, Phoebe Cates, uh, Fast Times Ridge Mount High. All right, go ahead, Mike. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Flash Gordon or Tron? Flash Gordon, 1980. Tron came out shortly after. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, you are correct. Uh, Flash Gordon came out in 1980, and Tron came out in 1982. Now, here are the last two. 
The Running Man. Yes. With your boy, Schwarzy Hayden, Schwarzenegger, or E.T. E.T. Saying E.T. came out first? Yes. God damn, boy, you are, you, you ran the table on this one. Nice. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, The Running Man came out in 1984 and E.T. came out in 82. Now, I don't hey, know if I'm going to admit this. I'm going to admit something for the first time to anyone anywhere, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal it to the whole world. All right. I cried a little bit at ET. All right. Go ahead, Mike. Hmm. All right. I, I, I was a little scared of ET. I was my mom took me too early to see it. 82 was a little early for me. You're three years older than me, I, I believe. Was 12. I was 12. 12. Uh, I was 11, 10. I was like nine ish. I, I had a little just, tear and I hit it. I hit it real good. I was like, I was like watching. I'm like, I'm like I was more scared about the government coming and taking him and all this. I was like more, it was like, I was like fear. Right. Um, Anyway. All right. All these movies that I've mentioned, I'm going to re I'm going to go back and mention all the movies that came out in 82, because I want you to think about this. Each of these movies that I just mentioned came out in 82. Okay. Back to the future. Terminator. Wrath of Khan. Tron. E.T. Blade Runner. All came out in eighty two. Best 82 fucking year for movies was a ever. Golden That's gotta be the that is a magic year. Golden age of movies for the eighties, right? That is crazy. All those in the same fuck. It's oh man. <laughs> it is. Now, yeah, there are some other movies that came out in other years that were good, but I think I I defy you to come out with as wonderful a list as that. So wow. uh we're gonna move on to toys. Okay. Uh, yeah, because we're running out of we're damn it. Uh, Nine forty seven. Hey. Some bitch. All right, keep moving. I know, I know. We're gonna we're gonna keep it moving, man. Keeping it moving. Um and 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 watch watch the chat room. I don't wanna I don't wanna miss anyone who has some some good stuff. All right. Um because like I said, I I I told you I, I was gonna drive this. You you know, you're along for the ride and you 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 know you're up for comfort. Last Starfighter is life. Paul, no, no. Yes, yeah. Paul. Yes. <laughs> Jeff Walker said I'm dead to him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Last Starfighters unite. Thank you, guys. Okay. Um, toys. Now Ooh, I'm gonna go down the list. Rankin, not... wait, real quick. Spin said Rankin uh, best holiday specials. Yes. Yes. But Rankin, were they the 80s? Man. Rankin, man. That's like uh, the Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer and all that. Was that 80s or was that sooner? I don't know. That's a good I, question. It's a good question. Spence, oh, go let Sorry. us know uh, f- when you find out. Post it on post it on the page later on if you find out. Um, so toys. This is not the definitive list, and I encourage everyone else to throw stuff in. But I, I, these are a lot of these are stuff you either can't get anymore or stuff that was just so awesome that, that if, if it still exists. But most of it doesn't exist. Here we go. Well, yes, the Rubik's Cube still exists. The Rubik's Cube, the snake, and the Whippet. Now remember the Whippet. It was that round, that round one. It was basically like the little tiles, but it went around three, three tiles and six this way and three this way, and you turn it and oh, yeah, move I like it. that one. No, I like that. Yeah. That one I could actually solve. I was the champion whippet solver on our bus on the fourth grade in Sparks Elementary School. Oh my God, just wanted to throw that out. Yes, I mean we had a championship. We had, we had. Uh, it was one one of my few claims to fame. I hate I'm Rubik's sad. Cube. Still hate Rubik's Cube. <laughs> My son taught me how to solve Rubik's Cube, but it literally takes me like 20 minutes. Um, Teddy Ruxpin. Do you remember Teddy Ruxpin? Unfortunately, yes. But do, like when you say that, do you remember like there was a book and a tape and you put the tape in the thing and it blinked and it was like, I was too old for it and I hated it. And I wanted to I, I wanted to launch them and shoot them with a shotgun. And well, you should have um, <laughs> Transformers. Did you have any Transformers? Fuck no, I couldn't afford no damn transformer. Look, I don't know. I mean, I, look, I, I just you know what I had, Mike? I had I had a stick. I transformed it into a gun. <laughs> That's what I had. I had rocks. I transformed them into car. No, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. No, but you I, I could have I couldn't afford no transformer. You know what's funny? What's like that? usually I would say I was just a I was I was not a very privileged child. But next to you, I realized I was very privileged. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Never had no transformer. <laughs> 
So I had Soundwave. He was the tape player, and he had the little – the tapes were actually little birds that flew around and were the spies that would go and listen in and stuff and come back and play in them. That was my – like one of my favorite toys ever. Um, John Walker, no. No, John Walker. What, what, what? what, what is, He's a go Oh, Ugh. Come on. It's like ghetto <laughs> transformers. Come on. I mean – well, well, even Pete's saying that. That's that's right. something. Dude, GoBots, okay. GoBots go bots were like it was like a block and you would unfold it once and it was a robot. Oh yeah, you really <laughs> transformed. Jesus God. Cabbage patch dolls and right. Garbage Pail Kids. Garbage Pail Kids cards are still popular and are, vintage ones are worth a lot of money. Yeah. So I'll put that out yes, there. Uh are. I would like to if you do Pete, do you remember the water full ring toss game? Waterful ring toss? No, well, it's, it, yes, W A T E R F U L. Waterful ring toss. It you will remember when I tell you this. It was like it was a like I guess like this. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. Water, and you push the little button and the thing. Push would the little button. Flip. Oh, I've got those. How about that being the first analog 3D VR game? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> right. So, all right, whatever. And, and there was also the ones that were soccer and, and basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was good at those. Yeah, yeah. Um, the sit and spin can't can't uh, talk about the '80s without talking about the sit and spin. Yeah, remember the sit and spin. Okay, uh, the Atari Twenty Six Hundred we mentioned already. The Nintendo NES, which I'm shocked. I cannot read. I did not know that it came out in '83. I would have swore it came out much later. It came out in '83. Yeah, there was, there was um, a whole slew of them. There was in television. Yeah, there was yeah. a bunch of them. There's a whole bunch of them. Because you know, and I know this because all my friends had all these different ones. Yeah. And guess what I had? None of them. Not Bump even it. a fucking Atari. No, I, I, I never I had a Pong machine that. at a garage sale. Now, you guys are going to see that Pac-Man game going through as we go through the pictures. I had that. That I did have. And uh, Mom, <laughs> thank you for buying me. That was one of my favorite little Pac-Man games. <laughs> Your mom says you had too much shit. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> That's awesome. Scott Potts hey. had Mud and Rocks. Yo, Ponty, mud and rocks. <laughs> yeah, uh huh. What's sitting in your living room right now, Pondy? A, a literal, like, huge. Um, what do you call it? He he just got. Did you see what he got on Facebook? He yeah, they yeah. got like a real, honest to goodness, um, hockey machine. Yeah. Um, anyway, he's trying. He's capturing his childhood that he didn't get. Yeah. Um, Game Boy. Do you know when the Game Boy came out? That's the little handheld one. Eighty yeah, nine. Really? Wow, that was early. Yeah. Yeah. I never had one of those either. <laughs> Paul Nunn says, green plastic army man, gasoline and fireworks. Paul, you, you're my yeah. spirit animal, man, because I used to do that. I did have green army men. I had tons of them. And we used to go to West Virginia all the time, so I would get fireworks, and I would shoot my army men and blow them up with the fireworks. Hell all man. right. Good times. Okay. Speak and spell. Yep. Now, do you remember there were two other uh, speak and things? Speak and blanks? Yeah, sure. There was speak and math and speak and read. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. I he, yeah. He, this is gonna get followed under. I had too much shit. I was like, Mom, I want to speak and spell. Mom, I want to speak and spell. Did I ever use that thing? Once I realized that it was a trick. It, no. it was a trick. They try to trick what? you into doing schoolwork. Right. Yeah. Was, mm -mm, mm -mm. So uh, that went with the coat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, light bright. Remember light bright? Oh, what a shit toy light bright was. I played with that oh, thing for like boy. five fucking minutes. I was like, this is a joke. And and then off the top of my head, spiral graph, which is still around today. You can get, sure, but the original spiral graph. Uh, like Ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, how about did how about this? How about the total cheesy? Like you just if you just take water on a brush and you paint it on the page and the color comes out of the page. Yeah, yeah. Remember yeah. that water, yeah. water, uh, paint with water coloring books. Yeah. You like literally um, you you just yeah. put water on a brush and it does all the coloring for you. That's a yeah. crap toy. That's horrible. I don't teach anybody hey, anything. For those of us that couldn't paint themselves, but who had no artistic ability, it made hey. you feel like something. You know what I had? I just realized this. I had my. I would get these from Seven Eleven, right by my mom's house. I'd go stay with her on the weekend sometimes, and uh, one of the things we would do is we'd go get the these these. Oh, I forget what they're called, but they're like <laughs> they're rub offs. I don't know, but they're like. 
I know what like, you're talking about. They're like clear, but they've got like images on them. And I would get like these marble ones and I would draw pictures of like a city landscape or something like that. And then I would put Spider-Man fighting like the, the creatures and stuff in it. Um, I used to love those. I, I would spend like hours cause I would draw the whole backgrounds and stuff. So you didn't use the backgrounds that came with it. No, well, yeah, I did, but but there, it was more fun. It, it lasted longer, and it was more fun to like create my own so, backgrounds. I'm going to tell you what they were called, okay. because I I used a big fan of those too. <laughs> Presto. What? Presto. Now that Paul knows, I, oh. I, stop! I got to I got to get off the nuns because it's killing. Presto me. Magic. They were called Presto Magic. Mm -hmm. I love those. So, okay. Uh, hey, how about lawn darts? <laughs> Lawn darts. Real. I knew that had, I knew that had to happen, and I yeah. had I actually had a set of lawn darts. Of course, you did. Right, because they had been discontinued, and they were really cheap. So we got those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the big wheel. Hey, did I ever tell you about the time I played real lawn darts? Me and my buddy Tim. You remember Tim Almany? Hey, hey Tim. Uh, oh God. We were sitting in the yard, and we actually had real darts, and we were throwing them at each other. Right, and the idea was to kind of like dodge the dart. Right, like get it close and like you to dodge it, right? Uh, and uh, uh. yeah, you know, that's the first time I ever pulled something actually out of my body, um, because one of them <laughs> landed in my leg and it like literally it stuck. <laughs> Certainly not the last. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> the big wheel. Uh, yep. Tommy Racing Turbo. Remember this little thing? Yeah, there it is. It was, I think it's up there right now, or it's uh, it was. Yeah, Tommy good. Turbo. You know, I never saw. I was I was putting this picture up for you, Mike. I never saw one of those before. Uh, I never got to play with one. I always wanted to. It was one of those that that even eluded me. Uh, big track. That was another one. I I did I did that one make this cut to get put up there big, or not? It's, big track. It's this. It's that truck that you would program it and you could oh, yeah, have yeah, it go. Yeah, to the there. Right I remember to that. Left. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, friend of mine. So that was three D view master. Yep. Um, so I think that's it for my list of uh toys. Did you have anything so, else? Oh, your big track's showing up right now. So yeah, okay. I had um a, a buddy of mine, Dave, had this thing called the Dark Tower, which was sort of like it was a board oh. and it had this like tower that came up out of it. Yes. Yep. That was such a fucking I love that game. We go we play it at his house I, all the time. Um, I played that game. Uh, I want to buy one now, but they're really super expensive, and yeah, and it yeah. probably sucks. You know, I probably remember it being yeah. really awesome, and it actually yep. sucks. But yeah. probably. Uh, so let's see. Anyone else got anything? Joes. I had some GI Joes, but I had that the original, like the big GI Joe. But I think that was in the seventies, so that I don't think that counts for the. Oh, 80s. with the that kung fu yeah. grip. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember my cousin Stuart had that Harley. He had the uh, Evil Knievel thing that you'd wind up and the motorcycle would take off. But I think that was the seventies too. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So, Max okay. cars. Yep. Yeah, ma you know what? Matchbox cars in and of itself was a whole institution. So yes, that that does deserve a mention. Um, anyone else? Anyone else got anything to say before we move on? Choose your own that... adventure books. Oh, uh, right. Choose your own adventure books. I have a ton of them. I still have a bunch of them. I I kept all mine. Snake Eyes. Uh, Scott, what was Snake Eyes? Because I I feel like I should remember what that was. As a toy. Uh, give us a description. But we're going to move on um, because, well, actually, you know what? I think we pretty much, in your intro, we covered 80s vernacular. Um, yeah, yeah, that's... It, like, uh, speak. Psych, Righteous, yeah. uh, Illin, Rad, Spaz, Hoser, Nerd, Jock, Poser, Wastoid, um, Take a Chill Pill, Where's the Beef, um, yeah. What's Your Damage? But, I mean, pretty much other than... Oh, Clutch! I'm yeah. going to... I'm not going to mention any names, but I, I happen to lay next to her at night when I sleep. She still uses the word clutch um, all the time. Really? I love you. So um, <laughs> let's see. Um, yeah, that's all there is to say about that. I mean, just uh, oh, oh, you know what we said right before we started the show? We were like saying how it was amazing how the 80s was so keen on the west coast as far as vernacular like like they were in love like the 80s was in love with california at the time if you think about it yeah um and then you would mention that there was some east coast west coast stuff going yeah, on there was, all right so so the 80s it, it, 80s a really interesting time and mike and i i mean we're we're white guys so we didn't cover a lot of the stuff that was going on in hip-hop hip-hop was humongous in the 80s i mean it was birthed it birthed right out i think it had like the very tail end of the 70s um, and then like really exploded into the 80s. And I remember I was 13 and 
I was uh, in junior high school, and we, we we had several different high schools we could go to. We could apply to different high schools. There's some magnet schools and stuff. And one of the schools I went to, um, I wound up hanging out. It was it was a mostly black school. I think like 99% black school. And I was hanging out with with uh, these people in like um, I think they were in some kind of dance dance or drama or something. And they put this tape in, and they started playing this music. And it might have been 82 even. I, I can't remember, but. They were playing all this really cool music that I hadn't I hadn't ever heard, you know, and and it was um it was all like this old hip hop stuff, like a lot of old old hip hop stuff, and uh, they actually gave me the tape, and I was I was like what I was like really I can have this and they were they were like yeah yeah they're like we can make another one it's no big deal you can have it go ahead enjoy it, and oh. uh, it was no it was really awesome they were like my chaperones like show me around the school and stuff, and um I got into a lot of I was doing like I got into like break dancing I was never very good at it. I could do some stuff, but you know, I never really got great at it because I never, I never really spent a lot of time trying it. Uh, but I, oh. I loved all like, like the movies Break In and and uh, and Electric yeah. Blue and, but but that was all that was. I mean, there was some of that on, on the West Coast, but that was really big East Coast stuff. Beach Street, yeah, East yeah. East Coast Beach Street. Now it's interesting because David talked about break dancing and he talked about uh, no laces on your shoes. But hold on, remember neon laces the thick neon laces and you would lace your shoes up so that they just went straight across straight across not like yeah. crisscross across yeah. across across yep that was a thing yeah. too oh here we go we hit it uh, we hit we hit a thing man grandmaster flash oh. new laces break dancing yep. yep. totally <laughs> yeah i yes. mean there is a whole hip-hop element that oh you know i'm not really a big expert on, on a lot of that i mean again i remember listening to this music and 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 like loving the scene and and this was all before it was even called rap. I don't even know if it was called hip hop yet. I don't, I don't know it was. that it had a name. Rap. I think they start called. It was it was basically. I think the the name was rap at the time. No, dude. I remember. I remember when they started calling it rap, and it had been several years afterwards. Like it was uh -huh. back. This is like, dude. I'm going way way the fuck back. Uh, okay. Um. You know what we should do? We should try and find. Uh, an 80s um, music, uh, someone who is very, I guess, knowledgeable about 80s music, because I would love to do a deep dive on that, but I just don't have all the all the knowledges is. Um, so, all right, let's move on, though, because uh, it's 10 o'clock. We, we do have a couple of extra minutes because we did start late, but um, I want to talk about um, the mall. Because yeah. that is where we spent a large portion of our time. I mean, like when you went to sleep over Eric's house, then what did you do? Well, you either went roller skating uh, or to the movies or to the mall. So uh, I'm just going to run down this list. And then please, again, people start throwing out some stuff where um, if I missed anything, a place that you went to the mall. I mean, obviously, there's the food court, but uh, <clears throat> the casual corner, uh, there was my favorite. My favorite place I used to shop, but I, I don't know if I should be. You tell me, Pete. Should I be embarrassed about this or not? Chess King. I did some shopping at Chess King. No, man. What guy didn't do shopping at Chess King? Come on. I, mean, I didn't uh, buy a lot of stuff there, but yeah. I, I might have bought a thing or two from there or, or wanted to. Yeah. Sam, Sam Goody. Remember yeah. the old Sam Goody? Uh, record and tape traders. Sure. And uh, let me I see. In my Baltimore, wife at, my wife worked at one of those. What was the one out in your way? Was that a record and tape traders or the same? Guy? Ah, shit, Jenny, are you listening? Because you were the one that told me that there was a there was one that I had forgotten and I didn't write it down. So throw that in the chat room for me, will you, babe? Um, the great potato. potato. <laughs> nice. Um, let's see. Uh, merry go round. Camelot music. That was another music place. Oh my um, God, yeah. The children's place. Um, the Gap. Electronics Boutique, Caldor. KB Toys, Caldor, yeah, yeah. Tom McCann in the mall, um, Glamour Shots, <laughs> yeah, who did Glamour, Glamour Shots? Shots? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> uh, the Sharper Image, that was born from the yes, 80s. That came out of the 80s. And the Benetton Store, United Colors Benetton. of Benetton. Do you know what? Do, um, do, do you remember? I did a. I did a. I was. It's the only protest I ever did. I was part of a protest. I only went because I think some girls were going. Uh, there was a protest like against animal cruelty that Benetton was doing, and it was. I think it was a PETA thing or some shit. I don't know. Yes, there was a whole thing about that. I believe. I believe you're right. And you did mention this before, Pete, but maybe we weren't live at that point. But Scott just mentioned it. The mall arcade, like yeah. 
Yes. Like, seriously, uh, this this past summer, Jenny and I went to um, the beach, right? And I said, I just want to play some pinball. Like, that's all I want to do is I want to play some pinball. And we went into every one of those places that used no to pinball? be – yeah, that used to be all full of video games, uh, you know, arcade games and pinball machines and shit. And we found like one or two places out of all those places down in Ocean City, right on the boardwalk. Only one or two places had two or three, maybe two pinball machines. And that was it. Forget. Maybe there was like one Pac-Man or Miss Pac-Man machine or something. Right. But it really does kind of what, suck. What do they have there now? Because I, I still remember we went with London. There weren't a whole lot of games she could play. No, it's just one of those stupid Chuck E. Cheese things where you get tickets, tickets, tickets. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, got to get tickets, like yeah. thousands of tickets so I can get an eraser. Right. Such, yeah. such crap. Right. Orange Julius. Uh, what else do we got? Um, Town, Spencer's Gifts. Well, Spencer's Gifts is still around, but you're right, Spence. That was big in the 80s. Or no, I'm sorry, Michael. That was super big in the yep. 80s. Yep. Record Town. That's what it was, Jenny. Thank you. Um, and I think that's it for the mall. Again, running running low on time. And I only have two or three other things just, I want to cover. And we can so cover you know, them. I, I, didn't, I didn't really like going to the mall that much. I wasn't a big molly. Um, you know, and I know a lot mall of people rat, were. Mall rat. I wasn't really a mall rat. I'd, I'd go to okay. the mall to watch movies and to play in the arcade. And that was about it. I, other than that, right. I didn't really... Eh, it was all right. I, I did. The only time I ever shart myself was at a mall once. So, you what yourself? The shart, you know, like like a full on, like full blown, like real shart was at a mall. That did happen at a mall once. I was, like a, I had a lot of gas. And shart, I was fart, shart and I con was four, cool. shart con three. What were you? Yeah. Oh man, I think it was a. I had to go home. There was. <laughs> There that's was, that's definitely I, at least a four. I had a lot of gas, and I thought it was really funny. And I'm walking around the halls like, and I thought it was really funny. And then I was like, oh, I'm gonna go. <laughs> Great. Well, that was a very lovely story. Moving on to food. Um, just real quickly, uh, try to find some things that I can't you can't really find anymore. Uh, and and please uh, throw out some other things with you guys. Um, wait, but hold on. New- wait, 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 wait. One uh, clarification. Fucking nostalgia. Internet buys don't count. Like there's so many things they've brought back that. Yes. You can now yes. buy online and it, it doesn't really count because it's not right. really in stores. Yes, yes, pretty much. Yes. Um, New Coke. That'll never come back. No, thank God. Hey, did you know Max Hedrum was the biggest spokesperson for New Coke? Not even Max Hedrum could sell that shit. Nope. Um, Mr. T cereal. Oh, yeah, Yeah. that was a thing. Uh, Big League Chew. I think you can still get it, but still, man, it 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 was just the 80s, man. Big League Chew. Um, Micro magic fries, burgers, and milkshakes. Micro magic and and other things like you basically you could get this little frozen burger. It was the first type of frozen burger you could put in and just cook oh, it for thirty seconds gotcha. and you you could eat it. Hey, remember the French fries that we would heat up and then feed them to your cat while they were hot? That was micro magic French fries. Yes, hot <laughs> kitty with a hot French fry. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. I think Slam Chicken did a song about that. Yes. Yes. Okay. Oh, um, Michael Tom says McDLT. Yeah. Goodbye. Bye, Sam. Yeah. Thank God. Bye. Piece of shit. It's horrible. Crystal yeah. Pepsi. Yeah. Good riddance. All right. Sorry. Go ahead, like, Mike. The, like the McRib. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I hope I didn't stir up some shit in there, but uh, I'm not a big fan of the McRib myself. Uh, tab. Oh, no. Yep. Tab. It's still around. You can still get Tab. Yeah. I know they brought it back, but for a while it was uh, it was like you couldn't even you know it was like dangerous. They took it off and, and David all. David Benavides, yes, fruit stripe gum was the bomb. It was one of my favorites. I always yeah. chew that shit all the time. Although it lost yeah. its flavor like ten seconds in, like chew chew chew. Oh, I can spit it out now. That's why there was like it was this big. You could just keep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 the last one I'd like to say is Jello pudding pops. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Zima, Scott Pond, yes. They did bring that back for about five minutes. Ugh. Now, was that 80s or was that a 90s thing? I, I want to mm. say Zima was a 90s thing. I want to say 90s because we were drinking it. Well, I think we've told that story one too many times, but yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, I didn't really have much else for food. What do you think, Pete? Did you have anything else off the top of your head? You, get no, anywhere, you said Joe Cola, right? I did Oh, you you said Jolt Cola, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Like um, yeah, nineties, eighties food. I mean, hmm, yeah, you can't, I can't really. I don't. 
I don't think you can get that you hit it. that uh, bean and cheese burrito at uh, 7-Eleven anymore that we used to uh, we used to get. I don't know. That was That's 90s, too. But... Yeah. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's let's move moving on to cars real quick. And we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. A lot of these are just fast, you know, like um, awesome cars. But then some of them are just dorky ones, too. Like the 80s was just, I don't think the 80s was really known for cars. You know oh, what I mean? The 80s was not good for cars, man. It no. was. No. And, and the only thing worse than the 80s for cars was the fucking 90s. It got uglier. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Lamborghini Countach. Yes, that was, that was, a, that was a good one. Uh, and, and, and I don't know why I didn't put this one on the top of the list. I apologize, everyone. It, it, it did make it second. The DMC-12 DeLorean. Yes. yes. Duh. Uh, the Pontiac Fiero. Again, another quintessential 80s car. The Ferrari Testarossa. Another uh, quintessential 80s car. Uh and and before I get into the not so fast cars, we can't we have to pay homage to the Datsun 240Z. Yeah. Okay. Uh, remember we drove one of those. You and I have had a chance to drive one of those. Oh, it was so nice. Uh, okay. Uh, and now in uh, in no particular order, um, from um, every particular order, going from wait, worst. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You're missing the Gremlin. I think that oh, was 80s. The Gremlin and the and the and the um, the Pacer. Remember the. <laughs> Fucking yeah, I mean, you know, you want to get technical, we can we can start talking about Pintos too, but they're no, bad. that's that's eh, that's more of a seventies car. Yeah, that was that's a seventies car. But no, but okay. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Go ahead. I, I would be remiss if I did not mention a the wood panel Ford station wagon. Yes, <laughs> and the the quintessential the car that defined the eighties, the Yugo. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and you know what? Hey, you know, uh, uh, Michael Thompson mentioned the to the dots and becoming the Daihatsu. Di Daihatsu. Um, you know, I, I I can't remember what it was. Did did Nissan become Datsun? I think it. Be, I think it, no, Nissan. Datsun. Datsun became Nissan. It used okay. to be the Datsun. It was like it was the uh, Datsun. The, the the first car I had before that Pinto. I never got this on the road, so it doesn't really count as my first car. But I had it, and I was working on trying to get it running. Uh -huh. It had both. It had Datsun and Nissan. On the back of it because they were in transition that year. Yep, I had a I had a Datsun Nissan Sentra uh, okay. as one of my cars that I bought. Yep, nice. mm -hmm. you are right, sir. Okay, moving on. Oh, the Super uh, Baja. Real... I wanted one of those so fucking bad. I which which mm -hmm. one? The the Baja, the Subaru Baja. Oh, it was it was like the one of the very first SUVs that ever came out. Huh. I think it was. It might have even been the first SUV. I mean, if you, let's consider a Jeep an SUV. No, I wouldn't. No, okay. So I, I think the Baja was. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to move on. Yep. Uh, let's see. Um, all right. I got two more two more things real quick. Uh, and we're going to just move on to comedians. Uh, I want you and, – and really, comedy wasn't, wasn't all that in the, in the 80s as I did some – some things but this is one little real quick game and i couldn't put women in here because the misogynistic 80s um just did not have a lot of women comics and like i could tell you some that i would have put on the list from the 80s but i couldn't even find on ranker i couldn't even find um you know like the a, a good definitive ranked list of 80s comic female comics so unfortunately these are male comics but i want you to rank these one to five, okay? I'm going to give them to you in this order. John Candy, Eddie Murphy, Robin Williams, Rodney Dangerfield, and Stephen Wright. Now, I'm going to tell you these are all top five. These are the top five ranked best comics from the 80s. I find that horrific that some of those people made it on there um, in some ways. Not in other ways. I guess I can understand it. But I guess, like, you know, there, they, there was not a lot of comedy in the 80s. I guess it was so controlled. But what do you think? Who do you think would be um, first? Uh, dude, I can't remember that, no, that okay. list. John Candy, yeah. Eddie Murphy, Robin Williams, uh, Rodney Dangerfield, and Stephen Wright. Okay. What are you asking me? Who else should be on there? Yeah. George no, Carlin. No, no, no. No, no. Oh, George Carlin should have been on there. Correct. What I'm asking you is, of those people, rank them best to worst or best Dude, to number five. I can't remember five. that whole list. I, I'm okay, gonna I'm say... just gonna. All right, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna tell you this because we're running low on time. Okay, 
Robin Williams, and you're going to, when I tell you this, you're going to go, oh, well, that makes sense. So Robin Williams at number one. Okay, sure. that makes sense. Eddie Murphy. Makes number sense. Two, right, of course. If he's Unless he's one, number one, he'd be number two. Right. Rodney Dangerfield, number three. I, I can't, of all the comics. No no, no. no, no, hold on. Have you ever watched Rodney Dangerfield? Have you gone back and watched him, like, on The Tonight Show I mean, and stuff? He was a funny it's guy. Funny. I, it's funny. I still say that George Carlin was was funnier, was better. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. George Carlin's not even on a list, which is bullshit, which fucks the whole list right. up. But go ahead. I mean, I mean, top five, right. Yeah. Uh, even Wright, okay. He's funny. I mean, dude. but yeah. you know what? We take him for granted. No, no, no. We take him for granted because his jokes seem old and, and like contrived now, but back then they were super fucking fun. I remember watching him and watching him for like, just sitting there and laughing my ass, tears coming out of my eyes. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, and then John Candy, which again, eh, okay. Look, I'm not taking anything away from John Candy other than I would take fifth place away and give someone else fifth place. All right, we're done with comics. Uh, com comedy was just a, a strange bird in the 80s. Um, you go back and listen to some of the material some other comics would talk about. Yeah, and there, there's some people that they're not, they're not treating as comics, okay? Because <clears throat> Carol Burnett is probably one of the funniest fucking comedians that ever lived. Right. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. Carol Burnett she was would funny be, as yeah. fuck. You go back to some watch some of her routines. Her yeah. and like and her and Tim Conway would play off of each other. I'm sitting oh, yeah. there fucking crying watching that shit. So she was robbed. She should have been on that list. Ellen DeGeneres, comic of the eighties. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if she was uh, moving as funny on. back then as she is now. I think she's funnier now than she used to be. I she was always very you know, go back and watch an old thing. I mean, no, you know, no, for no, the no. time, she was always funny. I'm just saying, I think she's even funnier now than she used to. Be. Right. The only other thing I want to talk about, real quick, and I know we're about fifty. We're about uh, we're running five minutes late, but um, yeah. that's not too bad for us. Um, I want to talk about politics and major news, mostly major news and just mm -hmm. events of the '80s. So, uh, a one, two, three, four. I have five of them. And we're going to go out and go down them real quick, and then we can discuss any of them or none of them. Okay. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, uh, Challenger disaster. That was a huge thing. Um, number two, President Reagan's assassination attempt. That was another big yeah. thing. Um, and then again, you know, it's interesting. And this is what I had to give you that you, you actually put Reagan on your top 10 list because. And I'm just looking at this now, like Berlin Wall Falls. That yep. was another. Reagan. That was another Reaganism. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, you know, I think Reagan he he does deserve it. And one um, of his not so good moments, the Iran Contra uh, scandal. Yeah, not a lot of good. Not <coughs> a good right. Eight years, you know, you're bound to. Hmm. Um, okay. The the AIDS ep epidemic. Um, yes. Oh, let me. I got something to say about AIDS. Okay. So here I was. Imagine, uh -oh. right? Eyes cover your ears. Imagine, I was like twelve years old, right? And 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 I was thirteen. I think I was thirteen. It was nineteen eighty three. I'm getting ready to go to high school the next year, and I'm thinking, yes, I can't wait to go to high school. I'm gonna meet girls. I'm gonna and I'm gonna I'm gonna start having sex. I'm gonna I'm gonna become you know I'm gonna become a man, right, or whatever. And I was all excited. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna have sex. And um. I probably wouldn't have anyway, but anyway, <laughs> so, and 1983 time magazine, cover time magazine, AIDS ep epidemic hits, right? And everybody uh, sex just goes away. It becomes a different thing. Like people are still having sex, but it became a whole different like feel about it. The seventies free love all gone, all that gone, all the seventies love that everybody, that all my predecessors were having. I was not going to have any of that free love. And, uh, yeah, that sucked. I did not. I was, yeah. I mean, at least I didn't get AIDS, so that's the upside. But <laughs> so, in other words, for certain, yet yeah, well, you know what though? I think you did all right, champ. I think you did all right. Hey, hey. did all right. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Hold on, wait. Camera's not on you. You're not making noise. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I did okay. All right, anyway. did all right. Yeah. Cupcake. Uh, and the last thing, um, the computer revolution. Uh, begins and especially Mac versus PC, but just in, in essence, it was the eighties when um, just the Atari 400 and the Atari 800s and the, the other home computers um, started coming out. And it's just been uh, a wild ride ever since. I can't believe we've, it, it's, you know, for certain things, I, I just can't believe that we're as far as we've gotten Moore's law and whatnot. So 
that's amazing yeah uh that's i don't know anything else uh news wise are you checking the room um yeah, no, the appearance, I mean, the appearance of crack <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's crack. 80s. No, that's true. Right. No, that the the drug war, the whole like that that was fucking yeah. humongous. Yeah. Crack comes out um and uh let's see what uh, you know, it it was it was just interesting that the more they fought drugs, the worse the fucking drugs got. I mean, it was like yeah. you know, they they were like, it's "Oh, drugs are bad, you know." They weren't people, really trying. People did some LSD, they smoked some pot. I mean, you know, crazy motherfuckers do some PCP or something, you know, like I mean, and and everybody knew that that was the crazy some bitch or heroin. Like people were just like, "Nobody going to do no heroin. That shit's crazy. You got to be hardcore to do the heroin, right?" And then they start this drug war and that and then everybody's doing all the crazy shit. And it's just like, dude, you can't tell people not to do stuff. It's like a kid, right? You can't tell right. them not to do something. Tell them, hey, drugs are great, it's the best thing ever. And then nobody will want to do them because it's cool. Or it's not you cool. have to That's use it. you have to use drugs before you go to work in the morning. Right. Yeah. yeah. Use the drugs all day long. Um yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, How did you I, just grandfather drugs. Oh, you have to use the drugs. Use the drugs. <laughs> Actually, that's not that's not true. That's absolutely not true. But it's it's funny to say. But uh, but yeah, no, I it, it was weird. Yeah, I think uh, and I think I think meth actually I think meth actually came out of the eighties. It wasn't very big, but I think I think um, I think meth started around then sometime. Around then. Commodore one twenty eight. <laughs> <laughs> Jenny corrected him said Commodore 64. Before, yeah. uh, there was Beirut, just say no. The Mac 10, yeah. Angel Dust. Thanks, Mom. Yes, Angel Dust. Um, <laughs> Panama God. Invasion. Um, so, yeah, man, that's, that's a lot of stuff. All right, that let's wrap this some bitch up. Quite a, lot of, of quite a lot of 80s. We'll have to hit this another time. Maybe in the fall after our summer break, we'll do like the 80s movies or something. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally down for that. That'd be awesome. All right. All right, fantastic. All right, everybody, thank you all for joining us. We we really appreciate you taking this ride into into our into our past with us. Um, it, it, the eighties was fun. I liked it, but I grew up in it. You know, I think anyone who didn't grow up in it has a hard time really feeling it. And and I think that's any generation with any time. Like the seventies, I don't really feel the seventies that much. I I lived in it, but I don't fucking remember it. Right, so it wasn't that great to me. But the generation before me loves the seventies. God damn, I don't their disco. I don't know how I feel about the fact that I can honestly say that Cosby raised me and I don't know how I feel about that because I think he did a good job, but at the same time, dad's in jail. Yeah, you're, separate, you're separating the artist from the art. That's all that is. Yeah. All right. That's fair. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. I mean, whatever. I'm not going to get into it. I, I have a whole, there's a whole subject matter of artists from the art, but whatever. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So, so if you, if you love the eighties as much as we did, then, then thanks for joining us. A lot of people hung out and they, they've hung out with us for a long time. So let's let them go. All right. Thanks uh, guys. Yep. Here we go. All right, everybody. You've just enjoyed another tubular episode of the myth wits. Uh, I'm not going to do any more of that. That's the last one. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do like follow subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate and make sure to share your favorite episode. This is a good one. It's a fun one uh, on social media to help spread myth wits love over the entire planet. I don't have it in the notes, but I'm going to add this. Hey, we have a group myth fits. Join it. It's great. It's great. It's the best best group ever. Uh, tweet us at MythWits and check out MythWits.com. MythWits is produced by Aetherforge Creations as part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com and Aetherforge.com for more cool stuff. Uh, and TSR has a lot of cool stuff really coming out. Um, Jason wants everyone to buy Top Secret. Go buy Top Secret. It's a great game. At, um, myth at MythWits on Twitter. At yep. MythWits on Instagram. Yes. Um, Holla at us. <laughs> Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it, don't sell it, and don't try to power your flux capacitor with it. Thanks, everybody. Oh, for real, real quick, hold on. I just noticed nobody shared this episode because it was so interesting. Everyone was riveted. Share this episode so that all of your other old fart friends can um, learn about the 80s and reminisce like us, okay? I'm going to share it right now, too. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Pete. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, well, that was the part where I go, thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. Until next week, Mike... Knight Rider, Dukes of Hazard, Mass Cheers, and Hill Street Blues. Hollow notes.